was about. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about merchants. And how you can do a lot of stuff with them. Don't take and I mean, to be of fair, <laughs> merchant and upgrade stuff is the whole reason why I went, let's have wizard nonsense all over the place. Because then we can just say, all right, we want to learn a new skill or buy a new skill, however that works. Wizard nonsense. Yeah. Where's the nonsense? We're nonsense. We're nonsense rider. <laughs> wow. uh, hi! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to part three of Project Veer! Ah. Um, ah, part three. It's already part three. T kind of part two. I was considering calling part one zero because we didn't know what we were doing. So. I mean, do, do we know what we're doing now? No, but that's we know what we're doing within a framework that we understand where that's that's what we're supposed to be doing. We know that we are supposed to not know what we're doing now, so that's fine. Understand? Sure. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a problem. <laughs> the idea is you're not supposed to understand, so maybe we have to go back to the drawing board and smash it up. Um, right, so yeah. We're on the drawing board. <laughs> We, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> this entire pro project takes place on the drawing board. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, uh, we're back, doing more veery things. Yep. Uh, how is how is all? How how did we all do with the first spin? Uh, I made a cat. <laughs> you made a cat. Not just a cat. You also made character. Cool, cool spirit friend and bucket boy. Yes, I I drew a spirit friend. I drew a man. I mean, I don't know if it's a man. I drew a person in armor, and a little bucket friend, bucket child. <laughs> bucket child, look at them. They are on screen because they're good. This is this is the sort of thing I should be going for. Basically, everything that I've tried to do for this project has either been like the most nonsensical scribble or a painting, <laughs> and <laughs> this is what I should be aiming for. Uh, yeah, I I mean, especially with the like the um, spirit knights, uh, I was like, I I want to draw this, but. I'm not going to be able to do it justice before the stream. I am going to continue this, but let me just do a scribble because I <laughs> talked about it last week and I feel like I need to do a scribble. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I did a very quick picture just before the, scream, the stream as well. Before scream. the scream. <laughs> the scream stream. <laughs> Betty scrim streams. You don't want us to prepare anything. It's fine. Don't worry about it. You can doodle things on stream. That's why I plan to try and work out what on earth is going on with the robot that I wanted to make last stream. <laughs> Because I haven't found anything with that. <laughs> That's also. Um, <laughs> I guess we should also th th reintroduce what's going on. <laughs> sure. It's Project Via. We are making a fantasy adventure game, a la Zelda, Dark Souls, what have you. Um, zone by zone. Everybody has a zone. Um, and that they've come up with separately. We all brought them together, and now we're just sort of randomising them around each other with random prompts. Um, so last week everybody got given somebody else's zone and the prompt to make a character or characters. Um, obviously you don't, nobody had to follow the prompt or prepare anything or what have you. It's just a nice little thing to throw around. Um, I don't really think we have a tone for this world yet. <laughs> We're still just sort of throwing ideas around. I think uh, there is no tone. Yeah, I think, I think we're definitely going to have the ups and downs because we've got like, you know, when we've got, we've got bucket friend, bucket child. We've got yeah. cute, cute limbo cat, uh, and also lizard mafia. Yeah, uh, that's also a thing. Yeah, <laughs> and a, oppressive armor-based regime. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that's the fun about like these worlds where like you do these things. Like things are not necessarily gonna be in turn, and that's fine. <laughs> I mean, to be one. fair, a lot of games that you've sort of mentioned in that list also sort of have wildly different tone. Yeah. So yeah. you've got 
that like I'm I'm thinking like with Majora's Mask, where with some stuff it's like, oh, it's silly, and then also the moon is falling into the yes. earth. <laughs> I, it, it, it and you put on the faces it. of people's dead loved ones. <laughs> Yay, mm. games. Hi, miss. Also, hi, miss. It's also just like with... Because we accidentally have like already done like a lot with like people going to live in like, you know, the ruins of old and just in general a lot of old ruins. And we kind of have like... Mm some sort of theme going there with like do you continue with the old do you like let n new things settle in what what you know there's something going in like on there in that direction and other than that that's just a lot of silliness <laughs> honestly the fact that you're already considering like i was i was just thinking like sort of general atmosphere and tone and you're thinking like what's the point of the story what's the message we're trying to I get mean, across and it's you're not like... really a message <laughs> it's just that it's something that like went through my head like that first stream already when i heard like everyone's sense like we coincidentally had a lot of ruins and like people like like in lewis's zone it's like the whole like they aren't supposed to be there. They are like remnants of the past that refuse to move on, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> and that in my zone it happens to be like, it's an old ruin, and the lizard people were like, or hey, free real estate. Well, other people were like, <laughs> you know, we're gonna live here now. And with Kira Zone, it's like there is something old and forgotten and mysterious and possibly dangerous somewhere in the forest. But on the edge, there are people who are just, you know, living there now and living their lives. Like, it was all coincidentally, but it all, like, felt like it kind of fit together for me and, like... Yeah, and then with Dark Skin, like, it's like, no one really knows how, how the Flying City, like, figures out where it's going, as it were. It just sort of goes places and everyone deals with it. Yeah. Um, and then we've got... I mean, the viaduct where it's like no one even knows who built this. It's just everyone's building on top of it or around it or on it. Yeah. It's convenient, because why not? And with the wizards, it's like, okay, they know something. No one understands also, what they're saying. They don't... Yeah. I mean, a lot of them also <laughs> don't really care, because they're just doing whatever the fuck they feel like. <laughs> like oh, well, uh, yeah. keep doing that. It, it all kind of, like, like, I wouldn't know, like, how to word it as, like, a, you know, a thing, but, like, it's, it, it there is, like, something there, like, theming-wise, or, like, motif-wise, or whatever you will call it. Yeah, and I, I think I'd have to go back and look at what I wrote on the wizard's house last week but i think that was sort of in the list of like oh yeah <laughs> motifs that are sort of going on here <laughs> anyway miss if you'd like us to explain anything do let us know um I, I appreciate you coming in right hot straight off the button with uh a good old pun i, I like that <laughs> yeah the, the amphibian mafia which i feel like you should be able to like push into one word in some way, but I haven't figured out how yet. <laughs> Just vibing. Yeah. yeah, vibe. This gentleman needs to be longer, but I don't know how to do that. Oh, well. Uh, Just... Select everything from his neck downwards, and then yeah, well, to transform. No, I, I, I know how to physically transform him to make him <laughs> longer, but I like don't know how to make the proportions longer in the way that makes sense, because salamanders are not people. Yeah, that, and this that, is a salamander that is standing. Yeah, okay. I, I've also tried to like figure that out so far, but yeah. you know, it, it's 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 a funky thing to try because. Mostly what I have done is, like, you know, make them kind of humanoid, but, like, still, like, very much, like, their body is, like, all the same 
thickness and then they have like little arms and legs without really like shoulders or anything. Just kind of like noodling out of their body. <laughs> I don't know how to draw a tongue coming out to look its eyeball. I need to occasionally. <laughs> Is, oh, look at the heart pulls. <laughs> Dogo has heart pulls. Oh. Oh. It's definitely not because pulls confuse me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, they give you pulls for thought. You know, hearts <laughs> and little toe beans, usually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, before I forget, <clears throat> because I will. Um, I'll share some stuff that I did between streams. Um, to get a new layer, because it just replaces what's on the layer. Ah, there we go. Um, I think I showed this during the hangout. Yay! Um, Looks so this cool. Is, this is the Moss Weaver. This is... You know him, you <laughs> love him. He's the yeah. Moss Weaver. <laughs> they, weave, they weave moss. They're constantly in a hunched position. I don't know how, to, how I don't know how big they're going to be when they stand up because like I don't know if you can see like their arms are tucked under their legs, so there's like their legs going over. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to figure out like how their anatomy works, and I don't think I'm supposed to. <laughs> no, not really. But I just like the idea that when they stand up, they are absolutely huge, um, but yeah. they haven't stood up for a very long time. Yeah, they're um, just kind of you know sitting down. Yeah. Um, they weaving some moss, weaving some moss. What? Weaving <laughs> <laughs> some moss. Um, yeah, they they weave moss. They can make, uh, uh, unsurprisingly, a merchant. Uh, they make moss <laughs> things for your character. They're defensive items, uh, armor, padded armor, etc. Um, which is to go alongside a doodle that I did in the hour before the stream started. Uh. Really? They look a little, oh. little, little bit like a bean pod. But <laughs> Why is it so cool? I this love is, this. This is yeah. the leaf smith. Oh. That for some reason this gives me. So do you? Um. Oh god, the name of the game is going to escape me. The bug Dark Souls. Uh, bug Dark Hollow Souls. Knight. Hollow Knight, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the the mantis, the mantis people in Hollow Knight. Oh yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, they're cool. Obviously, this is not the same thing. But when I saw that, I just immediately got that vibe of, oh no, you walk into the forest, and now suddenly the forest is attacking you. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is also a merch. With sharp blades. <laughs> they make things out of leaves, offensive items rather than defensive items. Um, ah. And I didn't really come up with individual characters. I think you could probably tell a bit of character just from the way they look. Um, although you shouldn't judge. Uh, but the one thing I did think was that these two, they're not really sort of, you know, they do their own thing. They're not like mm -hmm. part of the society that lives in the forest. They're just sort of off on their own doing whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Making their stuff. Uh, but something happened between them. And... They, they don't get on. <laughs> There's history there. Uh, and if if they see that you own a piece of equipment that was made by the other, they won't sell you anything. Oh, oh interesting. Uh, so you kind of have like to make a choice. Yeah. Between, like, do you want to go offensive or do you want to go defensive? Because yeah. they won't. Do you want to shuffle around your items so that they can't see that you have. <laughs> they can tell. <laughs> Although you might be able, there might be a mechanic where you could just sort of drop something behind a tree. <laughs> I mean, like maybe like a chest mechanic or something that you can yeah. store store stuff in places, certain places. <laughs> oh, but this might be an interesting, like side questy sort of thing where you don't have to do it, but you could. So in um, hi Carol. In the God of War soft reboot, you've got two dwarves who are brothers. Oh yeah, yeah. Who they up, they do your upgraded weapons, and they they also sell you some stuff as well. But for the majority of the game, they are not getting along because apparently they had a fight at some point in the past, and their differences just sort of uh, just sort of kept clashing with each other. And for most of the game, they're just complaining about each other and like um, 
at different story points, uh, one of them will like pick your weapon up and like upgrade it with a bit, and then at the next story point where the next one does, it's like, oh no, I see my brother's been touching it, you idiot. Um, <laughs> stuff like that. But eventually, now this is through story beats, but since this is an open world thing, this could be a side story thing. Eventually through story beats, you sort of bring the brothers back together and they work together to do a final upgrade, a, a final story necessary upgrade for your weapons with the they, they have these two brands that used to be one brand because they used to work together, but then when they fought and split up, they literally split up the brand. Uh, and then it's oh. like, oh, we put the brand back together and put their seal <laughs> on the Let's thing. get the brand it's back like, together. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like literal branding tool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that oh, no, yeah. might be an interesting like side questy type thing of figuring out what's going on between these two and helping them make amends. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. So that's just a uh, very quick recap for Kira who's just arrived. Uh, two merchants, the Moss Weaver and the Leafsmith. Uh, one sells you defensive items, the other sells you offensive items. And uh, they they don't like each other because something happened in their past and they only sell you something if you don't already have something that belongs to the other. So that could have been explained a lot better. But I like that. That's them. That's the characters I made for your zone. Yeah. Even though they don't have anything to do with the society that lives in your zone or the weird stuff that's going on in the middle of it. Also, well, I tried to write a piece of music and it's hard. <laughs> It's okay. These are great. <laughs> I mean, it could be and that they're like sort of semi related to the society in the forest. But I'm it's sure they like, interact with them, yeah. Like they, they just don't live in town as it were, partially because they've okay. been fighting with each other, partially because their jobs probably don't lend themselves to living living in the middle of We can whatever. take that, like a vibe for uh, what the people living in the actual village look like. You know? Yeah. Like they don't the... live there, but, you know, we can sort of, like, I'm not entirely disconnected. Yeah, because there's... So maybe it's just because I live in some smaller towns, but you've got some people where their jobs necessitate needing to have a lot of room, so they just don't live in the middle of the city. Um... A friend of mine from when I was a child, uh, her dad did some, like, mechanical fixing stuff. I don't remember all of the details. I was in elementary school. Um, but basically, with that, his workshop, there was no way you were putting that in suburbia. So mm. it's just out in the middle of a big field area, and there was his workshop, and there was their house because it was just more convenient to live by the workshop, because for the most part, he had to just get the stuff he was working on and bring it to the workshop. And so it's like, yeah, it's it like that, be, but with leaves. <laughs> you were, we're living out in the forest because it's more convenient to live out there because that's where all of your equipment is. I, I do like, imagine literally. for some reason that, like, the leafsmith has like an entire workplace and everything, and they are professional. And Moss Weaver is just kind of sitting somewhere, yeah, <laughs> the edge of the forest, sitting by a fire. <laughs> no, not sitting by a fire. Sitting by a bunch of rocks <laughs> that are also covered in moss. You're just doing the thing, you know. <laughs> you don't even it... like clock in that they're like a merchant until they're like. So, what do you want to buy? <laughs> oh, God, that would be so funny. You walk up to what you think is just a bunch of moss-covered rocks, and then suddenly one of them starts moving. Oh, God. Because, yeah, because Chris said, like, you said that they were supposed to be big. Now I'm just imagining, like, you just walk past some rocks covered in moss, and then suddenly just this, like, very big move, very, like, big, slow movement of just, like, Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> and um, just a friendly merchant with weaving some moss. Oh. 
So what I've got, and this gentleman does not have a name, and he also doesn't really have clothes, because I'm not, I don't know how you put clothes on a salamander. But I imagine they do have clothes at some point. That They at the very least have a hat. Um, So anyone who has played Skyrim, there are some missions that you do or can do where you essentially are taking out contracts for people. And there's just this guy where every time you fulfill a contract, and note that some of these contract things are like assassination contracts. Uh, and it's like, okay, you've done the assassination contract, you're getting paid. And somehow this mail carrier is always able to find you, regardless of where you are, and regardless <laughs> of what, of, of the level of illegality the mission was. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've seen, like, the little videos of just a courier, like, popping up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> They're good at their job. <laughs> so, I I imagine this world probably has a couple of couriers at the very least, whether it's all just the same courier. Like, I think in Skyrim it's just the same guy, which probably partially because you've only got so many models, might as well use the same one, and also that's just funny. Yeah. But here here's a male courier... He's a salamander. Yay! <laughs> awesome. I I love him. Just <laughs> like I I love the idea of just like for you know whatever random mission you have going on, but also just like in the main plot, and and suddenly he's behind you. Like, hey, I've got a letter for you. <laughs> So you cannot escape him, essentially, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, he's amphibious, which means he can get to you both on land and in sea. Yeah. <laughs> and in the caves, because everywhere. that's where he's from. Or she, I don't know, it's a salamander. And Who knows? It's flexible. <laughs> Gender undetermined. Yay. <laughs> Curious shit. Scared the shit out of me so many times. <laughs> exactly. You, you, you walk out of like the secret, super secret assassin base that no one's supposed to know about, and then suddenly the courier is just standing outside the door, and it's like, "How did you find this place, sir?" <laughs> I'm a courier. It's my job. <laughs> then they deliver you the letter, and they just kind of like walk away a few steps. <laughs> Uh, yeah, now, whether yeah. this is, like, a centralized mail system or just, like, <laughs> like, sort of just someone paid them to deliver a package and they deliver a package, don't know, but here's Courier <laughs> Salamander. I do love the idea of, like, I don't know where that would be, but just there, like, being, like, a, like, um postal service in like one of the cities and you walk inside and it's still just this one salamander <laughs> <laughs> just sitting there sorting the post well I don't know about like fully I mean there's depending on how many cities we have there might be more than one but there's probably at least a branch in the harbor town because yeah. especially if they're sending mail anywhere else, uh, ships are convenient for that. In fact, we still do that. Just just stick the package on the ship and then send the ship and then hope that uh, the Ever Given isn't on the same route. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. But yes, that is very funny. Just walk in and then it's just... Or, so since this is intended for just the caves, maybe the caves have a little... A little hub and maybe in the city there's multiple people that work at the mail carrier service but for the cavern area it's literally just this one guy <laughs> it's just, just this one salamander sitting in a cave with a bunch of boxes it, it, if, everywhere you go there's like they've got their own postal service and it's all bustling and there's people running around and doing lots of things and then you go to the cave and it's just that like it's, it's just as big a building it's just as big a like establishment but there's just this little salamander sitting in the middle going, I run this place. (laughs) There's 
they're like not unhappy about it, even though they have like tons of work to do because they're surrounded by letters that they have to sort and like go through. But they're just kind of, you know, this is what I do. <laughs> You and I... <laughs> well, I think even if we, we've sort of established now that even if we do have, like, deep existential stories and themes going on, there is just going to be random nonsense of a salamander in a big room sorting mail. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I uh, also forgot to mention, uh, as as usual, music brought to you by the wonderful Adrian von Ziegler, um, yeah. who only asks to have their name shouted out in exchange for using their music on this sort of thing for free. So thanks, Aid von Ziggy. Aid von Ziggy. Aid von Ziggy. Uh -huh. uh, also, if I think of that... I think I've come up with an idea for my robot that I like, which is that they're so broken that they've started patching themselves with bits of wood. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I mean, when it comes to anything that's not literally the chips, you can sort of get away with it, I guess. I didn't know I was playing music. Oh, I can turn it up a bit. Turn it up a lot. There, maybe that should be all right. Mm. Let me know if that's too loud, too quiet. Hopefully, audible now. <laughs> My apologies, <laughs> Aid von Ziggy. I'm really bad at. Well, I, I gave you a free shout out without anyone hearing your music, so there we go. <laughs> it's above and beyond. <clears throat> I drew a cat. Yes. <laughs> that's my contribution. Um. I mean, or cats are always a good doing. contribution. Yes. Yes. Um, it, it's hard to think because, like, the limbo is kind of, you know, it's not a city or anything. It, it's limbo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, <laughs> you got hard limbo. It's think, like, what would <laughs> be there. <laughs> um, but I do like the idea of there just being, like, this a very normal cat around who is definitely very normal uh, even when they transform um and who also just you know is kind of your guiding light i mean not really because they're a cat and they will also just fuck with you but also <laughs> they have a little light on the end of their tail and you can follow it <laughs> i mean to be if fair like at, at some point you probably get sent to like limbo and you have no idea what's going on it's just this big infinite plane of poppies it's just whatever um and you just run around for a bit not knowing anything and then you come across this cat with the big shiny tail mm -hmm. um and you're like oh hello cat and the cat runs away and you follow the cat and it, it goes towards its owners and that's how you find death. life and death <laughs> life and death <laughs> yeah and his name is mr tops that's very mr. important Tubbs. to know <laughs> Mr. Tubbs is good. Yeah. <laughs> but also a character? So do, do they have dialogue? Uh, presumably, yes. <laughs> I yeah, the dialogue is meow. <laughs> <laughs> the dialogue is meow. The dialogue is meow, but the player character mysteriously understands it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I it's mean, like in it the won't game, be... You don't even, like, get to know what the cat said because there aren't, like, you know, the in parentheses. It's just that your character can respond to it. <laughs> yeah. And they can't I mean, respond with words either, so... <laughs> talking cats in various games, so... With the... Kiro and Chris both voted for SMT, but 1920s Japan, and also this is sort of a noir detective story. Yeah. Uh, and there's amazing. a talking cat in that game, so... Wonderful. Yeah, fucking kitty. I mean, if if you're gonna do like, I don't know an awful lot about Japanese mythology, but I feel like a talk, talking cats, from what from what I know, fit in quite well. I don't 
I'm pretty sure this game itself doesn't have like voice acting in it, or at least the English for, uh, release of it didn't. Or if it did, I have forgotten about it completely. But yes, there is a cat that talks. Uh, you are the only one who can hear it, apparently. Hey. Most people cannot, but still, the cat will talk. I was about Just to have a crack at that I'm thinking. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. no. I'll, I'll go ahead. I was just thinking about budget. That like it could just be a magical inner voice because then the mouth wouldn't have to move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the animation budget. <laughs> if, if there's one thing I've learned from From Software, it's that lip syncing is overrated. <laughs> Some, sometimes don't even bother moving the mouth. Yeah, I know, and I don't know if it's still done, but I do know that at one point there was basically for games that they knew already were going to be multiple releases in multiple languages. They they basically have the lips moving in such a way that it didn't really match anything. Yeah, and then just didn't worry about it. And they went one step further. I don't know if it's still done. They went one step further with that um, in Animal Crossing and just had them actually go So Yeah. You have the We're sound and They didn't have to like, you know, speak English as long as they're like, you know, text boxes. <laughs> nah, text boxes are overrated. Just have them be garbled as well. Yeah. Everything be garbled. <laughs> I mean, if if you're not playing a cartridge that has a language that you read, uh, that's essentially what you're doing. Yeah. You and yes, Kiro, I, I fully expect you to recognize what this game is. Uh, but also, I found the bad descriptions funny and more descriptive of what's going on than the title, so... I like me some peculiar descriptions. Just on, honestly, just you know, nineteen twenties Japanese noir is is enough there, to get me on board. There is no <laughs> way of describing pretty much any of the N N SMT games that won't land in a sort of level of peculiarity, especially since um, Chibi. There's one character in the game that I expect you to look at and go, "No, this man should not exist." <laughs> <laughs> for various reasons. Okay, interesting. <laughs> uh, that makes me very curious. <laughs> He's GP one says of no, the man. To big antagonists. I don't, I don't remember exactly when he shows up in the plot line. It's been a hot minute since I last played or interacted with this game. So. While while the major overarching events, I remember the details escape. Some of the details escape me. Uh, as far as details of the plot are concerned. Um, was JPEG a PNG? The file Eggy liked. Uh, I think either should work. <laughs> Not from my iPad though. So no. Please help. Uh -huh. uh, so can I? Oh, yeah, not like that. Do that thing. Okay, that's not supported. I can save the image. Because. Ease of use. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I've got to find the image <laughs> because ease of use. <laughs> oh no, the image is missing. <clears throat> so I figured out how to make the mailbag not just blend in with the sides of the salamander. Uh, <laughs> make the mailbag very wide. <laughs> a it's a very bag. big bag. <laughs> Gotta carry a lot. Oh, oh big bag. Uh, and it's assign layer white. to Christy. <laughs> there you go, it's yours now. Thanks. Big bag. 
Put it at the top. Awesome. <laughs> He's an important salamander with importance. He ha they have a job. They're important. <laughs> <laughs> they have employment. Yes. <laughs> and more than enough work to do. Which you will see as you <laughs> go into the postal office. <laughs> Wait, hang on, how the hands work? <laughs> no! The eternal I mean, question. Purples. It's it's a robot, so it doesn't have to necessarily work. True. That's that's one of the nice things about machines. You don't have to be constrained by biology. Uh, unfortunately, it turns out biology figured out a couple of things through many, 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 many trial and errors. Hands are optional, yes. <laughs> you might be missing a hand. That's fine. Yeah, I can't remember the extent to which this uh, ruin in the forest was like technologically advanced, but I am just drawing a robot and I have no idea <laughs> whether it's appropriate. Uh, it's there now, so it's appropriate. That's the thing about this project. If you ask, <laughs> can I do this? The answer is yes. Oh yeah, but I'd like to... Make sure it's all right with the person whose zone it is, you know? It's collaboration. That's what the project's all about, collaboration. By which I mean making a thing and then saying, please fit this in. <laughs> collaboration. Anyway, we have friend. We have old man with stick. Old man with stick. Old man with stick. And nose. Nose is important. I mean, unless you don't like smelling things, in which case. They love smelling flowers. It's one of the uh, items. Ah. Another merchant. Unsurprisingly, you got the zone that was full of merchants. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the one I, I gave you two possible character options, which was merchants or cult. Um, or highwaymen, I think I also suggested. Bandits, that sort of thing. Um, I was just about to ask. Anything you'd find on a fantasy thoroughfare. Merchants. Merchants everywhere, yes. Peddling their wares or peddling someone else's wares. Definitely wear peddling. Always wear pedals. <laughs> See, it's, uh, I've still got Eurovision on the brain, and now I'm just imagining <laughs> like some Eurovision costume of like yep. having like bicycle pedals as shoes. Definitely I don't know. This would be painful, honestly, but they'd do it. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> or maybe merchant, cultist, and highwayman all together. Hmm. Macholtaman. Sure. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, that can happen. Some pirates did work for countries. Yeah. 
That, uh... That's, that wasn't a very nice move. <laughs> Not a great deal about pirates was a very nice move. Just, uh... Were Aren't you bad mouth pirates? <laughs> Unless you watch, uh... What's it called? Our flag means death. Then it was lovely. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't watched the show. I have watched costuming videos about it. Though. Ooh, nice. The costumes look nice. Yeah, I mean a lot about the show looks nice. And the annoying thing is, I, I I tried to come up with a couple of different ideas for like music for Gero's area, and I couldn't quite sort of get a feel that I liked. But partly because I don't really know what the feel of the area is yet. Um, but I am currently listening to a playlist of two hours of Celtic music, and literally any of these ideas would work. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't want to steal Aid, Aid von Ziggy's gig, you know, but. Instead of stealing. <laughs> it's it's weird starting from scratch compared to sort of, you know, listening to a bunch of existing music. It's strangely tricky, at least for me. But I do intend to make at least one piece of music for everyone's own. So that's my goal. Partly because I want to make a bunch more bunch of music and having lots of varied prompts is a cool way of doing it. You are the creativity. Uh, hmm. Who is your character, Christy? Sorry, what? Who is your character? Can you tell Reader us? Reader number one. I just know they're happy. Oh, oh. good. I mean, sometimes you just need NPCs around to say a few lines and then just exist. Yeah. Most NPCs do that. <laughs> most NPCs in most games have one line of dialogue. <laughs> Your zone is not a confusing mess. We've, we've talked about it for like 10 minutes. <laughs> you know? We're not going to get a clear idea. Like... When it comes to music, there's lots of different subtle ways of, like, conveying particular feelings and emotions with not just the music, but the arrangement. All sorts of things. So, yeah, don't... Don't worry, Kira. You get there. Everyone's turn is a confusing mess at this point. Yeah. Mine's literally just a road. <laughs> like... All I know about my zone so far is that apparently it has a postal office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's set up in like an old temple or something, but, you know. What the would be a good office. old ruin to have set up a postal center in? Uh, I don't know. Something with like, presumably with like a bunch of like little cabinets or something that you could like actually sort post in. I'm thinking of like, in old castles you used to have those like arrow slit windows. Oh, they'd be good for like putting letters through and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know whether there'll be something like that in a cave, but. <laughs> I mean, there's ruins there, so. Why not? The ruins were there before the mountain formed on top of it. I mean, even like if you were in a cave, if you have ruins like in a cave, you'd have to like make sure arrows would be able to get through. Just in case to defend, you know. But also, Clearly, there's, an old... there's a way in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just throwing out questions.
Y... Now, uh, we're basically at the... Oh, sorry. We're, we're, we're still in the spaghetti throwing portion. Oh, yeah. This, that's, as it were. <laughs> that's that's going to be going on for a while. <laughs> yeah. Just throw stuff at the wall and see what should works. It, should be called Project Spaghetti. <laughs> Project Spaghetti. That would make me hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I have put my... Um, iPad on Don't Disturb. I don't get this. <laughs> You're not hearing the thing? I heard no? one little thing, yeah. But... Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I don't pay attention, apparently. Well, that's I you... heard it, but I just sort of ignored it because it yeah. wasn't my... It wasn't my business. Exactly. Yeah, so, okay. so, so, stuff like that's fine. It's just, you know... It, it, even you know you always complain when your dog's barking. It's like we we barely hear that but either. It's, you'd be surprised what Discord can suppress. Well, I'm sorry either way. No. Annoying or not. No. <laughs> no, sorry. Only friend times. <laughs> what? Wouldn't he friend? What was everything that Dark said? Dark <laughs> said so much. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot. That Dark's okay. So we, the wheel made the uh, mistake of giving Dark the world. Um, <laughs> I mean, we didn't make that mistake. That was no. no the wheel made that mistake. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, also, sorry, I haven't shown this off either. This is, uh, we all got given the prompt, the extra prompt of uh, Lewis's area, the Golden City, and this is uh, armor character made by Chibi. Um, oh, ah. which, yeah, Lord knows how I forgot to show this. <laughs> Just look at it. <laughs> it's armor. It's cool. It looks like armor. <laughs> Woe indeed, miss. <laughs> I managed to make armor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, cool stuff. A lot of a lot of cool stuff to be putting in the gallery. Um, I can't see but yeah. it, but I love it. So it is in the project here thing. Um, if you scroll up a while through much text. Um, yeah, I I don't have, have any idea for that or like what the character would be. I just wanted to draw some armor. <laughs> yeah, look good. Uh, th this is, uh, I mean, this is the sort of stage that we're at. In if if this were indeed game development, this would be the make whatever you think is cool, and then we'll work out, <laughs> you know, how it fits in. So, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the stuff in I, I definitely know in terms of like Dark Souls um, and also Bioshock. Actually, uh, a lot of the things that became sort of iconic in the game were just a concept. Artists thought it would be cool to draw that thing, <laughs> and they're like, "This is really good. Let's work out how to build the game around." <laughs> Yeah, and then on the flip side, sometimes you make a thing and it's cool, but it doesn't quite work with what you're doing, so you yeah. do something else. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, uh, things, writing that has been made between streams. Um, yeah. we have, uh, did we talk about soot on the stream last time, or was that afterwards? I think that was just afterwards. Uh, okay, so, uh, Lewis has the character of soot um, or whatever their name was prior to them being perpetually covered in soot. Uh, yeah, they are. Uh, no, and that's all that matters. <laughs> they they are now soot. Um, they're an informant living in uh, Christie's Harbor City, um, Fantasy Copenhagen, Cop Copenhagen. I should stop trying, really, and just <laughs> the Harbor Fantasy City. Copenhagen. Harbor. Yeah. Yes, you um, could just say the Harbor City. The Harbor City. <laughs> we'll come up with a name eventually that doesn't involve me hideously mispronouncing place names. <laughs> um, I like Sut the character. He's good, yeah. So he's, he's apparently an uh, informant, knows a lot of things about a lot of people, and try and be nice to him, because if, if you're not nice to him, then the things he knows about you will probably end up in 
the hands of people you don't like. Um, but yeah, yeah. and yeah. It's, it's like a character of like, you know, whatever you're gonna say is gonna be told to anyone who will listen to him, but. <laughs> The same but, goes for everyone else. <laughs> exactly. Convert it works the converse is true too. So <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, I like I like this idea of this character who's just constantly covered in soot. It's just like yeah. yeah. I mean also because like it's not because they're like a minor or something, no, it's because they've just been, you know, transporting coal from like a a ship to yeah, they're, they're just know, I... unloading ships, <laughs> uh, unloading coal from ships for so long. There's just constantly being. They really should get better containers for this coal. Yeah, apparently they keep getting covered. <laughs> I also like the fact that they're not like you know, they're not the the leader of a gang. They're not like this secretive shadowy person. They just they just work at the docks. They're not even the boss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're, they're just there. No, the boss will they... actively yell at you yeah. if you like keep him up. <laughs> I mean, to be perfectly honest, though, those are some of the best informants, uh, as it were, because, like, who's paying attention to them? Yeah. Nobody. It's, it's soot. It's, it's just soot. soot. What's he gonna do? <laughs> Tell everyone, apparently. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Dark... Um... <laughs> Dark made the Mimbles? Yeah. So Dark's made uh, a god called Moink. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought about like the way it was pronounced out loud yet. <laughs> I'm going Moink. Moink. <laughs> um, who is uh, the god of wealth, joy, and charity, and they have a massive moustache. Um, and they, they just seem very nice, a very popular god, because they're all about prosperity and happiness. Um, and they are worshipped by the Mimbles, who are merchants, sort of a merchant... Uh, culture, race, creatures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Then seems like follow like one of uh, fey creatures. Oh yeah, fey creatures. Yes. I know. So that's an interesting notion. Uh, and I think the dark deliberately left their appearance vague. Yeah. So. I mean. Oh, that was the thing. You, he, he, I... I feel like this is the kind of universe where sort of like in FF9 where you just sort of walk through and there are future people of like various shapes and sizes. Why? Eh. Hey, uh, yeah. It's interesting. So before uh, he changed his mind and uh, wants me to draw another character who we'll get to soon. Um, I think he was this is a while ago. I don't know if it's sort of changed in his mind. But he was saying maybe drawing pictures of the Mimbles and his inspiration, or the, what he was thinking, was like the the musicians in Final Fantasy X. So like the the traveling musicians who are just like they don't they don't look like anything else in the world. It's just like a bird and a big thing with a drum on its belly. Um. So yeah, uh, we've got a Final Fantasy. I can see that with like all of these have like. I mean, their appearance is left vague, but they do have, like, some details about them that, like, don't really make sense for, like, one race to have. It's just kind of, like, whatever, and it doesn't look like anything we have so far. Yeah. <laughs> they just oh. are. Yeah. Just like so the we... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they just are. Um, and we have various uh, Mimbles, including Tuco, who is very long and thin and skinny, has a, has a big scarf. Um, that's what is, I is, is, wear. Oh, yeah, big puffy, puffy hat. hat that resembles a pattern mushroom cat. Hey. <laughs> I like uh, that, but it's a great <laughs> visual. <laughs> uh, there's also Dim Dom and Derek, who are <laughs> appear uh, exactly the same as one another, apart from the fact that they're wearing different hats, but which hat they're wearing at any given time changes. So it's tricky. Um, they also have a companion creature of unspecified description called Reginald the Fourth. It he he definitely left the companion creatures vague of like, what the fuck are they? Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> could be uh, 
the wildest creature you've ever seen with how many, I don't know how many arms and legs, could be a sheep. <laughs> could be, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> could be like a sheep, but without arms and legs. It's just wool with a head. <laughs> you mean the way I draw all my sheep? <laughs> <laughs> the way I draw my sheep as well, that's fine. <laughs> Um, there's also, uh, recently, we were also given Lady Felicia and Uncle Clyde and Olmar, more, some more Mimbles, who I haven't properly read yet. Um. I, I have read three of them, and, you know, just fun. <laughs> fun! Lady Felicia fun, sounds fun fancy. Characters. Uncle Clyde has a bushy beard, so I'm on board. Uh, Omar has four arms, so I'm on board. And five eyes, on an yeah. elongated head. Don't worry. And, I mean, with with all the descriptions we have of like some of these might be humans, but some of these might just be interesting creatures, race unknown. Don't ask. Every time you say like bushy mustache, I just sort of imagine like an actual like leafy bushy mustache. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Yeah. I'm, try I'm trying to think if we can have like sort of particular sort of mo like clothing motifs to make them sort of identifiable. It's like, oh yeah, that's, yeah. even if they're completely they're different shape and like, size. Not really a uniform, but like, you know, something along those lines of just kind of the same. Yeah, they have a special hat. Style, at least. <laughs> same era of like clothing that we draw inspiration from, something like that. Uh, yeah. There's also Volric, um, who is a character from the Golden City, um, oh, yes. who is, who, when first encountered, is uh, described as Volric the Pitiable, um, because they are just, you know, the lowest of the low in the society, with the, begging to be killed, basically. <laughs> They're not, not happy yeah. with their life. Um, but if the player chooses not to, and to and try to help them, then through the game you can help them sort of get stronger and get more stuff and so on and so forth, and there are little clues here and there that, you know... Clearly they it's not doing great stuff. <laughs> yeah, they might, they might be helping themselves uh, get stronger in ways that aren't necessarily particularly morally just. Um, <laughs> I mean, I imagine the actual lowest of the low is the trash can that we just, oh, yeah, that was designed yeah, yeah. last right. time. But I imagine, much like Grouch, it does not care. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was, uh, I, I, yeah, I wanted to make a like, character. Once you're living care. in a trash can, you're probably, like, doing it on purpose, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a choice. <laughs> there was a perfectly good set of leather armor there, and they're just like, no, trash can. It's um, metal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and by the end of this questline, Volric is uh, incredibly powerful and an incredible arsehole. Um, and becomes yeah, a really hard boss. boss. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. Yeah. Fun. There's, I think that's all of Dark's characters. I think so, yeah. Um, there is also Kiro's character. Yes. Kiro's character. Uh, who I, hang on, I can show on screen and read. Uh, let me save this to my folder of the drawings in. Um, Project Mirror Art, new folder, Kiro. Now I've got to find the folder again. This is a fantastic system. Mm -hmm. When you save images from Discord, it just doesn't want to give them extensions. Boom! Oh. Internet went out there's a traditional sketch. It's good. Um it's this good. It's good. Um what were the names? Uh, Herbert and Reginald or Jasper. I'm fine with those, they work. And they are a wizard who is uh myopic in vision and focus. Uh just only really well, so the, yeah, the wizard enjoys studying things that are either a long distance or very close up. Um, and basically anything in between has no real concept of existing. 
Um, and they have uh, a pet crow. There's a crow or raven. I've forgotten. Crow, yes. Um, who is just a massive kleptomaniac, steals everything, including the wizard's possessions, um, of which the wizard is thoroughly unaware. And, yeah. Uh, I love the detail of, like, the wizard always looks a little bit different because of, like, the crow <laughs> stealing and shit. <laughs> He's, yeah. like, completely unaware of it. The, the, crow, the crow keeps stealing things from the wizard, but also, like, adorning his hair and beard with bits and pieces without the wizard realizing. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm also sort of laughing at the thought of this being essentially a seeing eye crow, but also a gremlin. Yes. So it's like, why, oh, I need my hat. Both? Crow grabs, like, a bucket and puts it on top of <laughs> wizard's head. And wizard oh, doesn't know you. because wizard isn't looking. Yeah, <laughs> it's something on the head now. There's, yeah, it must be the hat. Off we go. Why is it clanking? What's in my hat? Um. So yeah, I think. Am I? Have I missed anything? Um. I think that was everything. I think so. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, I also need to save. Fuck it, friend. <laughs> Saving things from Discord is just an absolute pain. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so one other thing I wanted to chat about is do we think it would be worthwhile um, having another week on this prompt, or should we move on? I, I, didn't, I didn't want to feel like... Because time doesn't exist for me anymore. So, you know... I certainly could have done a lot more with this prompt. I don't know if anyone else feels like that. I'm perfectly happy to move on if people are. I'm perfectly happy to do another week of this if people are. Um, I mean, I feel like some of the characters might also... It might be better for us to build up a couple other areas before we go, okay, let's look at characters again. That makes sense. Because right now, I mean, like we said, this we're, we're, set, we're essentially at the throw the spaghetti at the wall portion. Yeah. Where... We've got some overarching ideas, which I actually did manage to type down. I'll put that in the Discord at some point. Um, with the whole thing of, like, life and death cycles and a decaying old world and knowledge has sort of left us, as it were, less knowledge than what we had in the past because of shenanigans or whatnot. <laughs> well, that's the point. If, if the story's going to sort of revolve around this idea of, like, you know, uh, previous ruins and civilizations that have gone, like, presumably life and death have seen this all happen. <laughs> like... <laughs> Probably, yeah. Like, th those characters can give some insight, if they want to, of course. I mean, I assume they, like, give insight in a way that, you know, life and death would, as in, like, this doesn't really matter. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> you know, like, you go live your life, things are gonna begin and things are gonna end. <laughs> That's just the way life and death works. <laughs> yeah, I also imagine, like, maybe you get into some, like, early areas of the, like, poppy void earlier on, but I imagine life and death are NPCs that you don't meet until, like, very late game. Yeah. yeah. Like, when your character is, I imagine, like, for some reason, like, your character is at, like, their lowest point or whatever, and then it's just, you know, life and death. Or, or, <laughs> idea. No. So, if this is a game where we've got a death isn't a everything gets reset, you have to restart the game. Maybe there's, like, a mysterious voice thing whenever you revive or whenever you have to restart Oh. From a previous safe. Uh, that I I reblocked a Tumblr post recently of just uh, what was it? Like death fights for you because death oh, yeah. is inevitable, so it can wait. <laughs> yeah, de death doesn't you want know? you to die. They want you to live because you're gonna die anyway. So you might as well, you know, make the most of the finite oh. bit. <laughs> for, yeah, for whatever reason, like. 
death is reviving our character because for some reason there's something about the character that's going to make it so that they can like fix things or something. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, or life is. Or both of them are. I don't know. They're probably working together, all things considered. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. There we go. And and considering that we've got the we've got the wizards with the we're breaking the fourth wall and explaining battle mechanics to you, you might be thinking, oh, it's just another weird wizard thing. And then it's like, no, 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 this is death. <laughs> death is talking to you whenever you're at the time to revive screen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, here it is, like, a little quote from a, like, pretty long post of, like, a death who is yeah. kind and patient, and before all and above all, inevitable. Just, you know. <laughs> it, it's a very fun concept, or just... Yeah. You're gonna, you're I, mean, gonna I guess die. now we have to... I, I, I guess no we should also to figure out it. how we want our death mechanic to work, so do we want it, like, with a Dark Souls thing where you revive, but you've lost some stuff? Do we want it to be more like with some other RPGs where it's like, you have to go back to your previous save point, or... What do we want here? Dinner? I, I guess... It's, I guess if we are going to tie it into the character of death, then it, that's probably going to require more knowledge of the story. Yeah. In, in order to actually inform that that mechanic. <laughs> I mean, it, like, also depends on if, like, you re revive at, like, safe points, or you revive at, like, you know, a central hub or anything like <laughs> no, that. No, you deliberately revive where it's the most dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> or, or we've got, like, a Sekiro thing where you've got, you can die and revive yourself there, or you can die and then just be like, right, I'm done, let's go back to the last safe place I was at. Oh, I, th I thought you were going to say we have a Sekiro thing where it's like you can you can die and go back to your checkpoint, or you can choose not to. Uh, oh no, that's not in Sekiro. That was what I thought was happening in Sekiro and wasn't. Um, <laughs> but a system in Sekiro where like reviving uh, causes repercussions in the world, um, like there are consequences for you cheating death. Um, and I always thought it was something to do with the active revival mechanic, because you get the choice. If it's Sekiro, shadows die twice, and so you die once, you have the opportunity to revive, and then die again, presumably. Um, and I always thought that was tied to the dragon rot mechanic um, of like people getting sick, because immortality is a curse. Um, but uh, I don't know. I mean, that might be another thing as well, if it's depending on how we want to do that, it it could be either game mechanic-wise or just story plot-wise. Life and death are having to rearrange a lot of things to keep going. <laughs> and that might be part of the bigger story in there where it's just kind of like, right, we don't do this usually. In fact, we don't do this at all. But for some reason or another, it is worth it for us to keep you coming back so you can do something even though it's messing up these other things. Or or maybe maybe they can't help it. Maybe there's some other previous thing that's latched onto you that's making you revive and that's yeah, just yeah. like, ah, fuck, not this shit maybe, again. Yeah, maybe they're really annoyed by it. <laughs> <laughs> no, like some other, yeah. so, some other outside force has like tied their parts of themselves to you and you just keep reviving and every time you die you get to hear death go ah not again <laughs> <laughs> i love the implication of like the fruit like you die and then you just see text appear on the screen ah fuck you again <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the idea that you are you are to death an administrative nuisance <laughs> They could they could consider you you know an abomination to the natural order, but the, honestly, you just it's just a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, so much paperwork. So much poppy work. Yeah, I mean, like you're you're constantly not going to the place you're supposed to be. <laughs> just <laughs> be very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> 
We have a system. Why are you not following the system? Just these passive aggressive tech bubble. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you here? Go home. <laughs> you stop bothering me, revive. <laughs> <laughs> and then you like pop up and limbo and death is just like no! Not here as well. <laughs> that's when that's when you find out that it was death saying all those things. It's like how many times have the first thing Death says to you in the game face to face is how many times have I told you? <laughs> You're not supposed to be here. I mean, it could be like a thing of like a like you your starting point is like at the edge of like the blood pool of like implying you've just come out there because it's just a cycle of you dying and ah, right. going through limbo, reviving, doing whatever, and being sent out by death again. I don't know. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And then, like, you start out at this, like, probably not like blood pool is set, but like this mysterious pool of, like, red, you know, red substance. <laughs> But, I mean, it's reasonable, like, oh, we, we woke up in a pool of blood. It's reasonable for the player to assume that that's, you know, our blood or something. Yeah. Like, not, not that it's a mysterious portal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then you, like, go through the world and then eventually you come back, or, like, at some point you come back to the blood pool, actually go in and then meet death again face to face. Or maybe... If it's sort of a beneficial thing, maybe we, whenever we revive, or if it's, like you said at the start of the game, we come out of a blood pool, but it's like not the blood pool. It's like a blood pool that's following us around or something, essentially. <laughs> that's terrifying. <laughs> I've been following, followed around by a pool of blood. <laughs> so, no, but I mean, like you die and then you revive and it's like, ah, crap, there's all the blood from my guts that just spilled out. It's yeah. Like, no, 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 no. That was the portal you just popped out of. It's just, it's a very annoying portal because Death yeah. is kind of like that doesn't go there. <laughs> <laughs> is that another Some, character? Someone Have opened up another the character? back door. <laughs> and you keep just flying out the window. <laughs> I, li I like the idea. A mimic blood pool. That's <laughs> Kira is already. <laughs> <laughs> that I mean, that is a fun idea. Also, because like. It's like the first hint that the blood pool isn't just like, you know, your own blood. Yeah, like it's a thing in universe, what, you know, that's there enough that a mimic would want to <laughs> copy yeah. it. Yeah. It's like clearly something like important that it would lure people to a mimic, but like, it's like the first hint that like, apparently this blood of, this pool of blood isn't just, you know, your thing. If you're paying attention, which I would probably not be, and then just be like, what? <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe... Hmm. Because if we if we have something like the bonfire mechanic, well maybe not just like the bonfire mechanic, but like safe spot where you revive mechanic. Maybe it's like okay, here's the main blood pool, but for whatever reason your connection with life and death has caused like many blood pools to pop up in various convenient spots, where <laughs> that's just where you revive. It's where you revive and where Something you save the game. There, yeah. There, he says there as if... Like a fun mechanic there. Sorry, I, I just came up with the idea of like, you know, oh, this is where you save the game. As if that's not... As if that's been a thing in games since 1999. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, but games auto save now, don't they? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but also. I mean, some have both. So I think the Dragon Quest games still have locations that you save at, but they've also got like quick saves. Uh, because those games are long. And if you have to, like, I don't know, go make dinner or something, and you're in the middle of a cave, uh, it's nice to be able to turn your machine off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so many times as a kid. Oh, no, I need to, uh, hang on, I need to get some save point. Yeah. <laughs> that sucked. <laughs> that was the one thing I liked about Pokemon compared to other some other games of that time. You could save wherever as long as it wasn't like literally in the middle of a battle. Yeah. Yeah, but then it was always I have to finish my battle. Because <laughs> <laughs> they always asked when you were just in the middle of a battle. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep. Well, you figured out something about our protagonist, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, there's some po potentially some sort of weird link between life and between life slash death and it. Yeah. Uh, whether it's an intended link, and Probably life and death not. are using you to try and <laughs> fix something or do something, or whether it's a unintended link and death, life and death are very annoyed. At all of these little windows you keep slipping through, and all of the paperwork is causing. I like the idea more of life and death being just like aware of it, but this was not their intention whatsoever. Because they're, you know, they're life and death. They, this is just what they do. They, they are just going through it. And then suddenly you're there, and you're alive, but death, death, but you're not supposed to be. They don't really know what's going on, but it, it isn't right. <laughs> you're not yeah. supposed to be there. <laughs> they don't know what's going on, but it needs fixing. Ooh, neat. Yeah, we could sort of do both, where it's like, we didn't do this on purpose, but since you're here anyway. Ta time well, to you're here. <laughs> For some reason, you can't die, so you want to do some stuff for us? Oh, I've got some of that typed up. I'll post little bits of things in the Discord when yeah. we're done. I need uh, my original plan. Well, my original plan was to do this as a. I have a, ga a gallery set up. Um, mm -hmm. So that I can put everybody's art up there and it's all, it's all good and nice. Um, and then I realized that, like, roughly half of the people involved in this project would be writing. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I didn't account for that, so I was like, "That's fine. I can make a picture of their writing. Like, I can I can just go in, make a sort of default template, and then just copy paste the text into Clip Studio, uh, make it make it look nice, export it as a PNG, stick it in the gallery, uh, and then Dark started posting just essays. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, I can't fit this in a picture, <laughs> so I need I need to have a rethink of how the gallery displays text." Um, I think I can work out a way of doing it nicely so that I can, you can have like blocks of text you can scroll through that are neatly compartmentalized in the gallery. I reckon that's that's doable. Just uh, I planned poorly. You'll figure it out. You, it out. you did not plan for dark. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't plan for anybody but me. 
because I'm the most important person. Yes. True. No, you're not supposed to agree with that. <laughs> That's not... no. True. No. <laughs> you started this project. <laughs> no! I started it to be a thing where everybody is equals. Is equals. That's grammar, that is. <laughs> so, speaking of... So we're about an hour and a half in. Do we want to spin the wheel to figure out what we're all working on next? Yeah, I, I did get the wheels up. Um, get wheels. Spin we can wheel. do a spin! Uh, hopefully this works. Show them. Wheels! wheels. There are wheels on the screen, hopefully. I, so again, just as a reminder, I set this up as a system. Um, what if we're all important, including you? I'm fine with that. I'm fine with being important with everybody else. Um, I disagree with the I am the most important statement. Um, sorry, I distracted myself by talking about myself. I'm such an ego. Um, you are, the, you are one ego. <laughs> I'm. I am. I am the ego. I don't the think best that's true. ego. The number one ego. Um. <laughs> no. So yeah. So just as a reminder, two wheels on the left. We're going to randomize who gets what zone. On the right, we're going to get a prompt. Um, some of the prompts are more likely than others. We had characters last time. Um, there's also on the left an option for everybody getting uh, someone's zone and somebody getting the world as a zone, um, which Dark got last time. Um, yeah, and I think I've set it up, fingers crossed, in such a way that we won't get the same zone twice in a row until we've gotten everyone's zone. Um, so everybody will get a chance to do everywhere. Yay. In the spirit of collaboration. Anyway, I'm going to spin the wheels. Spin! It's spin! It didn't crash. Hooray! Uh, ooh, quests. Quests? The oh, prompt is quests. <laughs> oh. Um, well, we Lewis... now have a mail service. So. Yeah, oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Lewis has uh, the viaduct. Um, Kiro gets the caves? Yes, no, that is, yeah, sorry, it's a regular the caves last time. Sorry, I'm confused. Yeah, Kira gets Chibi's caves. Um, Oobs gets the flying city. Um, everybody gets the harbor, which is a perfect place for quests. Yes. <laughs> um, that's, that's a good one for everyone to have quests. <laughs> yeah. Quest that worked, out, that worked out really well. Um, I get wizard nonsense, which is. <laughs> you can make a stupid quest. <laughs> uh, Chibi, you have the abyss. Ooh, interesting. Ooh. She connects to the caves, presumably, so that's gonna, gonna be some stuff there. Um <laughs> Dark Dark gets the Golden City again, so he's good, definitely gonna have some fun with uh, Oh yeah. Armor folk. Um Christy, you have the forest, Kira's forest. <gasps> <laughs> hey, we were just talking Ragdoll had some ideas for what to do with life and death. You've got limbo. So Yeah. <laughs> um and Plamps has the world. Mm. So yeah, quests. 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 So this is a writing prompt. Uh, you can you can draw little questy things. We've we've got characters. You can draw those characters doing things. You can write stuff. You can just just come up with ideas. You you can you can draw things that would be involved in quests. Okay. The the prompt is just quests. You could ignore I'm the prompt not, altogether. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well. It's just that I'm not the. I don't have the biggest imagination or have original you, thought process. Have you, have you played a game that has quests in it? It's mostly just, I lost my apples. Find my <laughs> apples. <laughs> yeah, they don't have fun. to be that involved. So, I mean, some quest lines are like, oh, this is bought important, and then others are like, help me sort the mail. Yeah. <laughs> Just get some characters that you like so far. Uh, so your prompt is for the forest, so maybe one of the characters I've drawn, um, or maybe not. And just think about like what would they, what would they want you to do in the game? Could be oh, important, could not be important. We've already talked about a potential side quest for like their reconnection. Yeah. So, can think about that. Just you know, 
<laughs> or their antagonization. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? <laughs> you can choose to try and get them together or to make them even more annoyed at each other. <laughs> They find Pooch and everything. <laughs> <laughs> All day in I mean, yeah, who knows yeah. What, what their original argument was about. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So they, built, they both wanted the same dog, but now that dog has got a little of puppies. Oh. <laughs> so they can get. Each each <laughs> well, well, yeah, you could actually do that. There's a quest in Zelda Ocarina of Time where you help a lady find her dog that went that ran off at night. Hmm. And she gives I you an item. Ride animal quests, so I might be able to do that. I mean, you can yeah. you can make animal quests. Yeah, this this hey, is the hey, thing. Is like, of, like, you have a forest zone. You can pick up whatever was... animals you like and just make a quest around them. Yeah. Hey. Please go collect my sheep. <laughs> they Aww. wandered off into the yeah. forest. <laughs> oh Get all God. the chickens back that in the coop. My favorite quest in the game. <laughs> but also, also the forest is like you know, Lost Woods, Time Anomaly, the weird space stuff going on. So it's like the, sh it's the sheep are just, weird. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the sheep are just like looping in space. It's strange. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really they're sheep. The sheep. They don't time. know what's going on regardless, so they're yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, I this is I the. Have that... I think I have that all typed in correctly. <laughs> Yeah, I should take a screenshot of it. <clears throat> uh, hang on, let me just double check. Should be good. Uh, I'm still so getting used screen. to the symbols that you use. Yeah, if you want me to change symbols to be clearer, they, they were just like first draft, so feel free to ask for changes. Um, I should have done like a color scheme, so everyone has a color. That would have made sense. That might be helpful. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where when I see it next to the name, it's like, oh, that makes sense. But seeing yeah. just the image, it takes me a moment to figure out which, which is one a it is. <laughs> these which are means new. It, it, it fails <laughs> as an icon. <laughs> an icon should be immediately obvious what it is. Uh, Dark has got Sydney, Christy has Forest, Time says the world, Kira has. Uh, No, no, Kira has the cave. Oh. See? Not not a good icon. <laughs> now don't judge me, miss. Uh yeah, oops, that's Play City. I've got wizard nonsense, everybody has to oh, have it. It's a good time. Uh, yourself. Uh, oh. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. You have limbo. <laughs> That's why I also messed up Kira with the Abyss, because Chris messed it up before. <laughs> when he read it off the first time. Did I? Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Hooray! Uh, I mean, you correct yourself, like, immediately, but, like, that's why, you know, okay. we trip I'm someone need to... up if they just try to remember it. <laughs> I, I feel like I can just replace your icon with just a salamander and it'll be, we, we'll know what it is. <laughs> I mean, you can do that. Like a ruin. It's it's hard. It's like I'm not gonna say myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's ten like you say there's ten people in the room, but I only count nine. <laughs> <laughs> well there are nine people, one of them is everyone, so yeah. So I guess eighteen, actually. <laughs> there are either nine, ten, or eighteen people here, and I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> which is more which is least inaccurate. Uh, oh god, I got a wizard nonsense quest. Like, this is going to be one of those quests that's just like place to place to place to place to place to place to place, completely convoluted. <laughs> so many. You can invent whatever teleportation system you want. <laughs> oh god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go 
go step into this box. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That Obviously, Dark just said, you know, Dark gets Golden City Quest. Of course it's Volric. Yeah. Like, <laughs> of course. Not true. I mean, to, to, to be fair, yes, that does very good luck for him. So with the wizards, I was... Since there's this weird temporal stuff going on with it, I, I just sort of figured that the doors that they use just sort of open wherever. So it could just be it's like, oh yeah, you just you need to go to a place. Yeah, I've got a door for that in the back. What? I mean, you open up what you thought was a pantry door, and it's like, you look down and there's a rope ladder, and it's like, I was just in the forest. <laughs> Why? Why does your pantry open to the harbor? <laughs> Ooh, wait, is that? No, that's not a joke in English. Sorry, no mind. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mind now. What is it? <laughs> it's. Uh, I was thinking those seedy little bars, taverns, pops. Um, there's a Danish word called uh, not a hidden um, tavern, but um, hiding tavern, kind of in one word. Muko. So I was gonna make a joke about that. <laughs> Oh so god, you opened up the pantry and it's the back door of a bar, and it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. My oh, what is your pantry open into a bar? I mean, that's where they get their food from, it works out. <laughs> you, you expect them to cook dinner? They're they're an academic. Yeah, exactly. They, they use more eat. Yeah, it's like, your quest will begin, jump in my hat. <laughs> Also, I was thinking, these two here, do they have an argument? <laughs> uh, no, I just wanted to draw the postal wizard and rag pull through. Yay. Is it funny that they are mirrored? What the? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like they've had a, a fight. <laughs> <laughs> I just... characters facing left. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> Quest, 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 quest. This. This quest. Oh, now I'm just imagining quest sprout. Quest? Quest? <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm, I am glad we got quest second, because, like... You know, yeah. we, we could have gotten character again. Well, see, the fun <laughs> thing is, since you were talking about maybe we need more time with character, you could make characters to go with your new quick characters to go with your quest oh yeah, yeah you have another area to do. <laughs> i mean dark obviously is going to be going along with the character he's already made but like you you can just make up another wizard to go with your quest. i'm going to try and connect all the wizards that we have so far together that's my plan <laughs> impossible <laughs> When I zoom out, I keep seeing this um, tree robo uh, as holding a piece of chocolate or pieces of chocolate. That's its fingers. <laughs> no, it's fingers. <laughs> His fingers are not made of chocolate. Off. A squirrel thought it was made of chocolate, which is why they're missing a bit. But that's, that's um... they're not actually chocolate. I, I have concerns about that squirrel and its diet. <laughs> It was too chewy to throw it away. I don't know why I'm spending more time on this <laughs> doodle than I should do. I just wanted to get the joke of, like, get in my hat. <laughs> it looks really fun. Yeah. Also, how you do eyebrows like that? I tried to do something like that, and just you've done it perfectly. Oh, that. 
three, three lumps on a straight line. <laughs> three lumps on a straight line. And then you do the same the other way around. We try and make it match. <laughs> or don't make it match. These or don't, are... yeah. With the, these are wizards. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like quests is a... I mean, quests is a good prompt because I forgot I put it on there. So... <laughs> <laughs> but also it's like, you know, the sec if our second prompt was like puzzle or MacGuffin or whatever, I feel like it's still not quite fleshed out these areas enough to for that to be like a fun thing to do yet. Well, I mean, there's nothing saying we have to have a full quest. So if you want to connect all of the wizards, you can start connecting some of the wizards. And as we get yeah, yeah. the wizards, we can add them onto the, oh god, just the longest fetch quest ever for every yep. single wizard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, That's no. what I'm thinking. <laughs> and like at, at a point, least... it looks like it starts repeating. But you, you get halfway through it again and then it changes. So a lot of people at that point have just given up thinking that it repeats, but no, it carries on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know who this, this cow goblin is. But... <laughs> They're fun. Yeah, I like them. My, my current thing is like, how do I make this look more interesting? Uh, horns? <laughs> That's my go-to at the moment. Goat yeah, too. Horns are good. And so considering the <laughs> game mechanic they fill, there will be at least one wizard in each main region. <laughs> well, except for maybe the afterlife. I don't. Well, actually, that would be very funny if there was a wizard just hanging out. Probably. They're not supposed to be Employed. there, but they're there. <laughs> they're not supposed to be. They're also an administrative headache. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago that they gave up trying to get rid of that guy. <laughs> they're still there. I just I, opened up a shop. My first like thought with that was just at one point you see either life or death just chasing after this wizard <laughs> like fucking broom. <laughs> just like, get out! <laughs> this is my house, get out! <laughs> yeah, but with, with how late game the afterlife feels, it wouldn't surprise me if there wasn't a wizard in the afterlife. But maybe in like whatever area the blood pool is, there's just like a door in the wall and it's like, all right, sure. <laughs> there's a wizard that lives next to the blood pool. <laughs> Of course. Keeps them young. Is, is that like the in this world the calling card of wizards? That there is just a door where there should not be a door. Yeah, they probably. just put they just put doors in things. <laughs> Do door or building that should not be there. Why is it so hard to come up with places doors shouldn't be? Because usually doors are in walls, and that's where doors are supposed yeah, to be. <laughs> typically, you need to think of a large flat surface, and that's usually a wall. Um, could could be a side of a big pumpkin. Um, that's all I've got. It's very specific. Tree trunk. Uh... I mean, last week I drew a door in a place where, well, a door could be there, but, um... How are you getting to that door? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the door, it can be in a weird place on a wall. It could be, like, you know, half above ground. We're not entirely sure how they open it. A door on a duck would be fun. Yeah, I was kind of going roughly along that. Uh... 
roughly along that line. Chris, are you putting a door on the side of a cow? Yes. <laughs> With the wizard, you, you need a lot around that line. You need to get surreal. With the wizards. I'm just thinking of the ancient um, torture instrument. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, this is this is uh, this is Bessie, not not a torture instrument. They don't seem to mind the door, really. How else do you get the milk out? Exactly. <laughs> oh god. Uh, I guess I don't need to draw others then. Um, it's just bags of milk in there. Yeah. It's already bottled. It's fine. <laughs> See, the problem with having the abyss, and not the abyss, the afterlife is my immediate thought is to go, great, I get to start figuring out what's up with what life and death want with you, and then I'm immediately like, but we also have no idea what life and death wants. <laughs> Where do I go with this? <laughs> you Again, like, you can come up with an idea, and then maybe in the future we come up with a different idea. There's, there's, there's no there's no harm in coming up with something now. Um, it We might not, it, it might not see it to the end, the but yeah, yeah we are spaghetti. spaghetti at the wall. No, we're not spaghetti, we're throwing spaghetti, but we could also be Life spaghetti. Life and death are having dinner together. It's spaghetti. They need yeah. a vintage wine for you to go get. <laughs> is is the wizard's quest to get spaghetti? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they, they keep each... referring you to a different wizard. <laughs> no, they each want a different type of spaghetti. But they're all oh, having a God. meal together, but they each want a different strand of spaghetti. <laughs> I just think it's only wizard. Can <laughs> I Chris, did you ever have to do those like logic problems where it's like, okay, you've got these people sitting at the table for a dinner, and this person, like each person's got like different meals and is on different seats, and there's like certain oh, yeah. rules on who they want to sit by and who they don't want to sit by and what's not next to each other. Yeah. <laughs> One of those, just, but with spaghetti. <laughs> just, just setting up a wizard banquet. And they are all just very frustrating about where they will and will not sit and what they will and will not eat. <laughs> that was that was one of the oddest things about Dishonored 2. Was you, you could just skip an entire level in that game by solving one of those puzzles. It's like, okay. what a weird bit of game design. <laughs> you hate the game? Here you go. Yeah, it's like it's a good level. It's not it's not annoying or anything. There's just like a door with a logic puzzle on it. It's like you could you could either go and get the key for this door or work it out yourself. And it's just one of those puzzles of like, oh these these five people went to this banquet and they each had a different affectation and they ate different things and this person sat next to this person but this person doesn't like what this person ate and so on and so forth I like those I like them as well they're nice but it's just it's just weird that that was a thing in Dishonored 2 <laughs> not a franchise known for its logic puzzles no and I don't even remember if it necessarily made sense for that particular door. <gasps> Who are these friends? <laughs> Giving a good thumbs up. <laughs> Listen, that, my first thought was like, what would be a fun quest for ocean life? And then immediately my brain went to like Star Cross Lovers. <laughs> so I don't know what that means. <laughs> Hey, look, the, the abyss is apparently star-like, so <laughs> it's got like little bioluminescent things, so yeah. So and yeah, is... you help them get together, I guess? <laughs> yeah. It okay. is mermaid, but isn't it? Do, do, do we want the mermaid to be like pretty mermaid or horrifying mermaid? I, I'm gonna make... 
her a horrifying mermaid. It's just that I don't know how to do that like off the fly. <laughs> yeah. If if you don't like her at her horrifying, then you don't deserve her at her etc. Or or maybe I... she's both. She like it, the face looks pretty, and then you realize that her lips open up all the way back to her ears, and there's just so many teeth. It's a Tory situation. <laughs> <laughs> I love how that's that's now what people remember Tory for. <laughs> How to ruin a character in a single comic. I mean, it's already, like, this mermaid is fucking huge compared yeah, to, like, yeah. this I, little, I, this little I, person I, in the suit. Thing is, like, some fish are very big. I mean, yeah, it's also, like, bottom of the ocean, like, this this mermaid. Like, there, she's gotta be big. <laughs> but what what person who isn't who, who is attracted to women doesn't want just a really large buff woman to just pick them up and carry yeah, them across exactly. the <laughs> That's exactly the vibe I'm going for. <laughs> like, like this, this dude or lady is living their best life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I also like the fact this this mermaid has learned how to like blow heart-shaped bubbles underwater. <laughs> yeah. Which is quite nice. <laughs> I just imagine that they are slowly sinking, giving a thumbs up. <laughs> yes. They're just going there. Yeah, the the quest just involves getting them weights. That's it. <laughs> they need more weight to sink. <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean, yeah. The fucking that... the fucking Bioshock fetch quest of you just have to get them all. <laughs> the Boots are in the library. <laughs> I mean, needing yeah. enough weights is legitimately a thing that you sometimes need to worry about in um, scuba diving. Uh, so it turns out different uh, types of body material have different buoyancy. So if you are... So I did a um, scuba diving sort of day thing in Scouts when I was a kid, where it was just someone kind of like, oh, we're just at the pool, and we're going to sort of show you how this stuff works. Um, and I was a skinny thing who had just burnt through all of my baby fat. Uh, so I put on all of the equipment and I sunk immediately to the bottom. Um, but everyone else who had not yet eaten through all of their baby fat uh, had to have weights attached to them, because it turns out uh, fat is more buoyant than just skin and bone. Yeah, mm. I, I'm, I, I have a, a decent amount of fat on me, and I, I used to just float. Just <laughs> did no difficulty floating. I'm a terrible swimmer, absolutely awful at swimming, but float I can do that no problem at all, or I used to be able to anyway. Yeah, that's how I knew as well. So you're less likely to drown than me because I will just sink. Uh, you haven't seen how badly I swim. I can't tread water for some reason. I can float, but I can't tread water. I don't know how that works. <laughs> Just float, also, but not all the way. Uh, what? <laughs> not all the way floating. Uh, so, Half flow? <laughs> <laughs> Just go with the flow. Don't say it doesn't matter. That's a song people probably don't know. It's fine. I'm feeling it's something with flow. I I feel like this this is one of those things where it's like there's a, there's a rule of improv, well, not a rule, but there's a a thing in improv which is if in doubt sing. Um, because for some reason singing just seems like a a segue or something interesting happening. Um, <laughs> but. No one knows the songs I know, so <laughs> I do If In Doubt Sing, and now people are more confused. Confusion isn't always bad. Oh, uh, no. But usually I try and do I'm it as a sort of... all the time, it's kind of funny. Oh, go away. Not you, sorry, chat. <laughs> chat window. <laughs> I keep pressing enter and the chat window pops up. And also, I don't mean Twitch chat either. I mean the chat. Oh God! <laughs> the Aggie chat. 
The Aggie chat, yes. Did we ever ascertain why this is called Aggie? Uh, I don't think I so. I think, but I have forgotten. <laughs> Rene Descartes on a on a forgetful day. <laughs> I think, therefore I've forgotten. Always draw two ears too close to the rest of the head. I can only come up with a great and that's not half. Sorry, what? Aggie, aggrade. I mean, Aggie is... I don't, I don't know if this is a... a shortening that exists outside of Britain, but Aggie is a, a term for sort of aggravated. Oh. Why? So to be, to be Aggie is to be, you know, grumpy. <laughs> So they're saying their program is so frustrating. Yeah, it's, it's, this is why I'm assuming it's not that, because <laughs> that doesn't feel doesn't feel what they're what they're probably going for. Well, there's not really an about page. I think it's a great candle. I envy. A great candle, I envy. It's about ducks. <laughs> we should be drawing ducks. It's the goose again. It's always the geese. Well, Aggie is also a name or nickname. Oh, is it short for something? Uh, Agatha, for the most part. Ah, yes. In the same way that Maggie is short for Magatha. That was a joke. Don't call your kids Magatha. Really having an eyebrow and uh, nose day. It's it's a, a symptom of drawing wizards. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm trying to draw <clears throat> Kiro's. Uh, what was it, Reginald and Sparky? No, well, not Sparky. Herbert, Herbert and Reginald, and or Jasper. Sparky, where does that come from? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I have been listening to a, a song called A Dog Called Sparky. Oh. No, Dog Like Sparky, sorry. Take a gander, that quack. No, I want you to look non plus, not angry. I need to make a crow look nonplussed. Could be sparky. No, uh, no, no. I'm no. putting minuses in its eyeballs. Hmm. All zeros. <laughs> I, I, I once on honestly had a lecture at this. Sorry, this is slight maths aside. Ellipse. Um. <laughs> sorry, ellipse just appeared in my screen. Uh. The, on honestly, once had a, a, a pseudo argument with a lecturer. Who thought that non-negative didn't include zero? And like that's the point of the term non-negative. Otherwise, you just say positive. 
point of non-negative is it does include zero. I Sorry, mean, that's, that's, it's, it's a niche in complaint. But. Yeah, I mean, technically in computer science, zero can be positive or negative. Uh, that's computer but science that, people, they're weird. Yeah, the, the, but that's also because of how we store digits, so... Yeah. I mean, that... I, I say computer science people are weird, I was reminded the other day of the fact that... In particular areas of and interests of maths, one plus two plus three plus four plus five, etc., to infinity is equal to minus a twelfth. So that's a fun one. <laughs> Math, go home. You're drunk. <laughs> uh, stop talking math now. Don't worry, everybody. It only happens briefly. I had occasional relapses. <laughs> this, is, this is not how crows look. What is what is this? Go away. Um. Oops, just put so much nonsense on top of the head of death. Yeah. That's a chicken. I've just drawn a chicken. Um. I, I don't know what Oob's intention was for, like, the scale, but I imagine that once we eventually actually meet death, like, death, death, and not just mysterious voice that talks to us whenever we die, it's gonna be like, <laughs> oh, here's death, and then, like, tiny. <clears throat> like, walking up to, um... God, what's her name in Dark Souls 1? Who's just... The, the lady who's just gigantic and you walk in and you've just got... It's just looking right at her chest because of how yeah. she's situated. <laughs> yes, that's... Uh, Guinevere? I think it's Guinevere. It's been a while. <laughs> also, I just skipped through her dialogue because just give me the bowl. <laughs> I just need the bowl. <laughs> Again, that probably says something about me. Everybody else is, you know, writing on the messages on the ground for other players, you know, the amazing chest ahead and stuff like that. Um, I'm just like, give me the bowl! I mean, to be fair, they do put it right there. It's just sort of funny that you're like, Everything else is fairly stand regular sized ish compared to you. And then she's just huge. Yep, she's huge. She big. You know, as as has been said, everybody who's attracted to women just really wants the massive woman in their life. That I suspect is where that came from. It was particularly confusing given the oh, I I hmm. I was about to say, given that Gwyn is so small. But it, it, it has burned himself out, quite literally, so... <laughs> Slightly a different situation. Big ears, I'm thinking. These are just dots, just makes this look silly. Maybe it'd be better if I just have no eyes here. No oh, eyes? <laughs> Crack! No! <laughs> ah. <laughs> look at this! <laughs> Pooch and duck. Find a toy for my doggy. 
you've acquired rubber duck. <laughs> yeah, I have to remember in these streams to sort of stop doing what I'm doing and look around for a bit and see what everybody else has been up to. So good stuff. Good stuff going on. Uh, I'm just drawing Reginald or whoever it is, uh, inspecting spaghetti. Very minutely. Probably does work. Um, I was going to I would like to copy this so I can just paste it. No, oh, okay, I still had it on. Slight adjustment. That feels better. <laughs> he says making the face twice as long as it was. <laughs> Slight adjustment. chin but I've already drawn the beard so what are you gonna do? Draw the hand on the beard? Well I've drawn the beard. <laughs> There's only so much of a drawing you can delete before you just get dispirited, you know? Dispirited away. I am at least starting to get comfortable sketching things in Agio now, so that's good. Getting comfortable. <gasps> Baby duck. Yes. <laughs> now, is it a baby duck looking to the left or is it like a baby dragon looking up to the right? It's up to you. Be laying on its back. What? <laughs> Is the beak an ear then? I feel like I need to move life and death closer together. Yeah, I, I went with dragons so that that would be like an ear or a horn or something. So I was trying to think of what else it would be. It just looks like a kind of little squidgy thing making kissy lips at the sky <laughs> <laughs> laying on its back holding its arm up Uh, just, you probably know, and I just missed stuff, because I'm bad. Um, but, uh, you know you're muted on Discord, Jibby. But... 
I didn't realize that. Oh, right. <laughs> so, well, I apologize for interrupting if you said anything cool. <laughs> no, I didn't say anything. Mm, I doubt. I mean, I said something. I said about the baby dragon. That was cute. It was like, yay. But other than that, I didn't say anything important. Mm. So nobody else was talking about anything. So I can right. only respond Why? to people, that's my curse. <laughs> oh, the horns. I forgot she's got different horns. Death's horns are a mess, and then those are all... Yeah. I feel like de depending on like how and this this is a weird thing to think about at this point um, but depending on how integral like life and death are to the story of this game I feel like you can make a good logo for the game out of their horns yeah probably yeah. A nice, nice motif going on. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, even it's if we great. don't get to, like, meet them, meet them until later, it could be that... So Oob's had it in their thing that, like, life and death are revered, and I have a feeling, like, even if we've got this thing going on of, like, the world has forgotten things, but there are some things that remain. Yeah. So, like, you, you still have things to life and death and like no one really understands it but who really understands it, that sort of thing in the first place yeah what, once upon a time it was known precisely what those things are now they're just sort of symbols mm -hmm. it's like the, the original meaning has been lost but the uh the habit of reverence remain we'll also be a cult thing <laughs> yeah also a cult <laughs> More cults! So many cults! <laughs> now we have the duck cult, we have the duck cult. And the cult of death! <laughs> <laughs> One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> uh, the limbo beings kind of make you think of the guardian statues in Never Ending Story. That's good. they probably can also like change scale of themselves but I just have this image of like Ooh. during some dramatic moment of things being revealed it's just like we've got player character uh, and then the rest of the screen is just massive life and death <laughs> they're pretty big I think they can probably they change their size at will so if they want to be big, they can be. <laughs> There's a dark. Hello, dark. Welcome to Doodle Time. We have uh, the happy merchant friend with with lips. Uh, <laughs> it's ellipse. We... Oh, ellipse. Uh... Uh, we have uh, was it Mr. 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 Tubbs. Mr. Tubbs. Who we know? <laughs> uh, hmm. uh, we have uh, Starcrossed Lovers. Um, I was about to say a ship, but it's, it's underwater, so no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think a sub is considered a type of ship. True. <laughs> uh, technically a boat. I, this is one thing it's I do boat. know is that um, other than like small things like lifeboats and stuff like that, the only things in at least the British Navy that are called boats are submarines. Okay then, so this is our this is our boat for the series. <laughs> our cannon yeah. boat. I cannon boat them. Boat. <laughs> uh, yeah, Big Daddy's falling in love with the mermaid. See? Someone, I was about to say someone who can make him feel like a little daddy. Oh, I don't, I don't like that sentence. Um, no, don't so moving that. on. Cute ducks and dog. I think these are unrelated, but they're there. Yeah. And as a consequence, make me very happy. Um, 
we have life and death saying hello to the character. We, we're working out sort of things to do with life and death in this game in terms of like the death mechanic. And the, basically the death mechanic involves we're not supposed to die yet because of shenanigans and death keeps finding us and going you're not supposed to be here bugger off stop stop coming back here um, but we don't realize it's death until we meet them later in the game yeah. um or you there's... happen to start at a at a pool of blood which you yes. don't realize yet is a portal to limbo <laughs> um yeah we, we also have a delivery lizard delivery um that doesn't work at all uh, yes, yeah, so it's Ragdoll's design and then Chippy's draw. Uh, we have a robot that's patching themselves together with wood. Uh, a cow with a door in it, because wizards can't be stopped. Um, uh, horn wizard with a portal in their hat. And this is Kiro's uh, wizard and burb inspecting spaghetti, because I got the wizard's that's quest. That's doing. <laughs> yep, they want, got to make sure it's the right spaghetti. <laughs> I didn't want to um, be like uh, throwing shade, so I didn't want to ask if it was a wand or a pocky stick. <laughs> <laughs> I <But> mean, it's spaghetti. <laughs> it's spaghetti. Although, probably I mean, could use it as a not... wand. <laughs> maybe there is a wizard who uses spaghetti as a wand. Maybe. Maybe that's. <laughs> maybe, like. You do all this expecting them wanting spaghetti for food, and then it turns out that they're they're just trying to get they're, they're trying to make a nice new wand for a wizard as a present. <laughs> Aww. that's why you need to get the exact right spaghetti. <laughs> It'll be just right, it's like the, the bouquet of a thousand cents, but it's the wand of a thousand spaghettis. <laughs> <laughs> of a thousand spaghettis. <laughs> That's my quest that's name, sorted. Like, at the very end, when you've finished it, that's how it ends up in your quest log. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, fun stuff. Also, Bird on Head is very cute. Yeah. It's so squashed. Uh... Yeah, it's the wheel. The wheel has been spin dark. Spun. Spin spun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got a quote the the prompt is quests. Um do do with that what you will. Um yeah. and everybody got their own zones. Uh just as a quick recap for everybody, uh Lewis has the viaduct, Kiro has Chibi's uh cave, uh Oobs has Dark's Flying City. Everybody can do things for the harbour because I, that's ideal. The Harvard City having quests in it is just, of course. Um, I get wizard nonsense. Chibi gets the Abyss. Uh, Dark gets the Golden City, so Volric probably. But also more. Why not? Um, Christy has the Forest, Kira's Forest. Uh, Ragdoll has Limbo. And Plamps gets the entire world. And since As we well, were talking about her, maybe we should still do character stuff. Hey, guess what? Hey, guess what you sometimes <laughs> need for quests? Yeah. Ooh, characters. Characters. I'm I'm attempting to string together every wizard thus made into a single quest, which just goes on way too long. Um because I also can't be stopped. Um <laughs> Well, I sort of half designed a wizard in the caves. So we've got one in there. <laughs> Dark needs to come up with six fun NPCs for Volric to kill. Great. <laughs> Don't give those NPCs quests to. <laughs> uh. I mean, you're you're making the NPCs for the sake of a quest, so fits it yeah. fits the prompt. Mm -hmm. I did I did give Dark Souls <laughs> as a token of inspiration for this project and. Everybody dies in Dark Souls, so it makes sense. None of my characters die, though. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah, you should... Ooh, tangly I think this is good to just have them looming. Loom. I feel like this is some sort of 
end game all the pieces are now coming together type thing. Me. You've done well, young one. <laughs> you can go home now. Uh, and rest. Yeah, it does definitely have that vibe to it. Of just ending. <laughs> ending vibes. Now, if only I could do, like, fancy text. I download fonts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go to dafont.com. That's where I get most of mine from. <laughs> you did. I, th I, thought, <laughs> I thought it was a play on you died. <laughs> you did. <laughs> you, <d> you died. <laughs> you died well. Uh, you did die. The guy called Brodus the Gatekeeper, who is the first boss fight to get into the Golden City proper. Player would beat him, Brodus has a good laugh and lets him through. Mm -hmm. He. Brothel. <laughs> uh, cool. Should we leave it there? Yeah. Yeah. Did some nice doodles, chatted some nice stuff. I will try and get everything together where possible and add a text feature to the gallery so that I can actually upload people's good writing rather than doing what I was doing. Yeah. Now, copy paste quick notes, both the stuff I had for the salamander and overarching ideas of the death stuff. Yeah. I've just sort of got it on a text file. Well, it's more than me. I've got, I've just got my ideas in my head. So, text files, my word. How professional. Uh, yeah. Make sure to rest here. Yes, rest. Everybody, rest. Particularly those of us who didn't get sleep last night. <laughs> <laughs> no rest. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for coming along. This is a good. Uh, this is a good time. We're, we're actually getting some semblance of, not structure, but like direction out of this, which is kind of nice. Um, I like one of the points is administrative nonsense. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it is. <laughs> no, Volric, don't kill Brovus. <laughs> no. No. How oh, dare you, bro? How oh, dare you kill Brothus? If you kill a spirit from the Golden City, do they just go back to limbo? Or... <laughs> unclear. <laughs> Un unclear. Right. Okay. Does not need to be answered. Yeah. To be to be determined by the player. Uh, yeah. So, uh, that's that's this is Project Veer. Yeah. Um, that's not the end of Project Veer. Oh, and um, that was the end. That was it. We've made Rest the game. I mean, we, we've we've made the final mission. We're done. No. Uh. Yeah. That's how it works, right? As soon as you work out what the ending is, then it's all done. Mm-hmm. Um, it worked for 16 symbols. It works for this. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'll be back on a Tuesday. Specifically the Tuesday coming up. Um, for more Bioshock Infinite DLC. Um, yeah. That's a game, and we're going to be playing it. Uh, yeah, mm. and uh, the schedule will continue thus. Um, Wednesday, maybe Doodle Stream. Saturday, hopefully Raft, unless people are doing RPGs. And then more of this on Sunday. Where we can see everybody's good ideas for quests. Um, or just pictures of characters doing quests. Or just chatting with friends. Who knows? We'll get a stream full. We're 24 minutes over, so. Exactly. We did it. <laughs> we did it! We're above and beyond the Call of Duty. Although maybe we should stream. We should stream for an extra hour because we missed an hour yesterday. So I feel, I feel like we should go. We should keep going. 
We're not going to. No, you can do that when you're off time. Yes. It would be off time then, wouldn't it? It'd be on time. Uh, off and on. Have you tried putting <laughs> it off and on again? <laughs> Many times. It never works. Um, yeah. Thanks, everybody, for coming along. Hope you had a good time. Uh, I'll see you on Tuesday. Uh, bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Peace.